welcome we'll talk about the interceptive orthodontics it's a uh, it's a science or art of orthodontics where we figure out the any abnormality and try to eliminate it uh, either in the dento alveolar region or skeletal abnormality a malpositioning of the skeletal so we determine that or we recognize that and eliminate all the irregularities and malpositions in preventive orthodontics we take all uh, we eliminate all the potential factors that may lead to malocclusion whereas in interceptive orthodontics the malocclusion has already occurred and we just take steps or procedures to prevent it from worsening you can see here uh, this deciduous d this is the deciduous first molar e has fallen off or either it was it was evolved or was extracted because it was curiously destructed so there is no e no deciduous second molar and permanent first molar has erupted now here we give a space maintainer because the teeth they have natural tendency to move in a mesial and occlusal direction so we give this blue band you see we give a space maintainer to for uh, to keep that space for the eruption of um, premolar so this first molar it may drift into that extraction site may move mesially hence we give a space maintainer the giving space maintainer it comes under uh, preventive orthodontics whereas the teeth has uh, we uh, didn't give a space maintainer and the permanent first molar has drifted into the extraction site we didn't give the space maintainer and we uh, the premolar it can't erupt into the space because there's no enough space for the eruption of that premolar hence we give a space regainer to regain that space but this should be undertaken prior to the eruption of deciduous second molar so that this six permanent first molar can uh, move in distally so giving a space maintainer is uh, in, comes under preventive orthodontics whereas giving space regainer it comes under interceptive orthodontics these are some procedures that fall under interceptive orthodontics like serial extraction correction of cross by space regaining muscle exercises interception of skeletal malrelation and removal of any barrier that is hampering the eruption of succedaneous tooth or the eruption of uh, permanent tooth so this ideal condition for serial extraction is that the patient should have a class 1 relationship and that there is arch length and tooth material discrepancy of about 5 to 7 mm or more than that that means that the tooth the teeth they are very bulky and they, they don't fit into the small arch the arch is small as compared to tooth material hence there is a tooth material access so this is an ideal condition for serial so these are the indications for serial extraction like class 1 relation, arch length deficiency when growth is insufficient enough and patients with straight and pleasing profile. So the reason why we do this serial extraction only in cases of class 1 and why we don't do expansion in class 1 cases is because you see in class 2 and class 3 either of the arches are overgrown or they are um, large like you see in class 2 maxilla is prognathic um, there is enough skeletal base for us to do expansion in maxilla whereas in class 3 there is mandibular prognathism mandibular has a large size so we can go for expansion whereas in class 1 we already have a small skeletal base and thus we don't do expansion in such cases instead we go for extraction so these are the conditions which cause arch length def uh, which denote the arch length deficiency like this absence of spacing premature loss of canine this crowding with the anteriors uh, usually lower anterior flaring ectopic eruption abnormal pattern of eruption and shedding and there is localized gingival recession in the lower anteriors so this is the picture of uh, tooth material and arch length discrepancy like the tooth uh, the teeth are not properly aligned some are more lingually placed some are more labially inclined and there is lower anterior flaring so this suggests that there is a need for serial extraction in class 1 cases and these are the contraindications class 2 and class 3 where we usually go for expansions and space dentition open a deep bite diastema if the permanent molars they are cariously destructed or if the patient has a high caries and plaque index and if that crowding is really small and it can be treated by proximal stripping then also we don't go for serial extraction and if there's a if the tooth teeth are missing and oligodontia 
Now, this is a rationale for serial extraction that uh, if the arch length and tooth material discrepancy is small or very less, it can be treated by proximal stripping, then we don't go for serial extraction. The physiologic tooth movement, like we talked before, the tooth, the teeth, they have natural uh, tendency to move into the extraction spaces. They move drift in mesially, more mesially than as compared to distal. And thus, we uh, we don't have to uh, move teeth uh, in any way. They just make use of physiologic forces, and thus this uh, serial extraction happens. Now, this uh, it's actually a uh, carried out in mixed dentition period, early mixed dentition. It's a procedure that includes a planned extraction of certain deciduous teeth and later specific permanent teeth in an orderly sequence and predetermined pattern to guide the erupting permanent teeth into a favorable position. So these are the three methods, Dwell's method, Tweets and Nance. In a Dwell's method, we extract the canines. You see in yellow color, we extract the deciduous canines for proper inclination and to give space to the incisors. Then these incisors drift into the space, they get properly inclined. Then we remove this D, deciduous first molar. And when this permanent, uh, sorry, when this premolars erupt into the space, we extract them as well. And as you can see, the permanent canines have erupted now. And then we get is this ideal relation. You see this mesial inclination of upper canine is towards the distal inclination of the lower canine. And mesiobuccal cusp fits into the mesiobuccal group of lower molar. And thus we get an ideal relationship. In the tweets method, we extract deciduous molar and we extract canine and premolar simultaneously. And in the Nance method is very much similar to the tweets except that we first extract deciduous molar followed by premolar which is followed by deciduous canine. Now this uh, extraction, serial extraction requires a fixed therapy after because sometimes the space closure doesn't happen. Sometimes the buccal segment, they migrate mesially and uh, there's no proper inclination of the roots. This is why we have to give a fixed therapy after carrying out this serial extraction. Now the another problem that we have to intercept is the anterior cross bite that is reverse over jet. The maxillary anteriors they are present behind the mandibular anteriors and they are of three types dentoalveolar, functional and skeletal. Now this is a self perpetuating condition that is if it is present in the deciduous tooth it will manifest it in the mixed and permanent dentition. So we have to treat it the first time we see it. In dentoalveolar cross bite, usually one or two uh, single tooth or few teeth are involved. In the functional, it is pseudo class 3 uh, because of uh, occlusal prematurity. Patient has this, it may be a habit of patient that they take the mandible forward as opposing to the centric relation. That while closing the mouth, they take the mandible forward and close it. So that gives an illusion of a pseudo class 3. The skeletal anterior cross bite, the problem lies in the skeletal, that is maxilla, it is retruded, it is behind mandible, so that is the uh, skeletal cross bite. Or either the mandibular, mandible is prognathic, it is too forward as compared to the maxilla. In the dento alveolar cross bites, we use a Catalan's appliance, we give patient tongue blade, but uh, here the patient's compliance is... Uh, affects a lot the tree outcome and then we also use a bite plate in the functional anterior cross bite we are uh, if the suppose problem is because of high feelings because uh, because of the high feelings patient is taking mandible forward so we treat that what according to the cause in the skeletal bite the problem is in the skeletal that in maxilla and the mandible so we make use of myofunctional or orthopedic appliances Another problems, uh, problem that we have to intercept is thumb sucking. So we make use of uh, habit breakers. Now this is thumb sucking is normal till 3 years of age. After that it may lead to problem like uh, open bite and posterior cross bite. So we give a habit breaker. Then tongue thrust and mouth breathing. Tongue thrust is uh, patient, during deglutition patient has a habit of making contact. Uh, with the extraction space or tooth, uh, patient usually take tongue in that places where the tooth is missing or any tooth anterior to the molar. Uh, mouth breathing, it causes lowered posture of mandible and tongue, so that produces malocclusion. So we use a vestibular screen. Now space regaining, suppose the tooth has been lost 
and we don't give a space maintainer so there will be space loss that is the uh, tooth that are present distal to that tooth uh, which has been lost they may move mesially and they may cause loss of arch length so which is not very good so uh, to get back that space we give a space regainer uh, we give a gerber space regainer we use jack screws or finger springs here you can see you can appreciate in the picture this tooth is d the cds first molar and e has fallen off so the six that is permanent molar has drifted mesially into the extraction site and this uh, premolar second premolar which has to erupt between the d and six it it doesn't have space to erupt into that space and thus it is the succedinous tooth it can't erupt into the space hence we give a space maintainer now we have to undertake this procedure prior to the eruption of second uh, molar suppose a second molar is present still here so we cannot move six distally with the help of space regainer hence this process has to be undertaken prior to the eruption of second molar this you can see below is a rod this is the gerber's appliance we have a rod which is present here mesially and this tube it is a hollow tube in which the compressed spring is present and a rod is present so this rod comes here mesially and this tube it comes near the molar so this spring is in a compressed state so it just pushes and opens up and pushes the six distally as it has this spring has a tendency that when compressed it uh, opens up and uh, this causes the regain of space now various muscle exercises for the normal occlusion to develop the neuromusculars and the muscle they should be normal as well so there are various exercises for lips like stretching upper upper lip either stretching up or down towards the chin then holding and pumping water inside the mouth back and forth massaging this there's this tug of war exercise like keeping the buttons behind the lips and then pulling them out with the help of thread so this is usually done in cases of small lips or hypertonic lips then these are uh, exercises for the tongue one elastic swallow tongue hold two elastic swallow now this one elastic swallow it is used for the correction of uh, suppose there is improper positioning of tongue so the intraoral elastic is placed on the tip of the tongue and the patient is asked to raise the tongue and then hold the elastic against the rugae and swallow that without displacing that elastic and then two elastic swallows two elastics are placed intraorally one in the midline and other over the tip of the tongue and then again patient is asked to swallow without displacing or or keeping just the elastics in position now there's this exercise for masseter muscle that strengthens the masseter muscle it involves the clenching of teeth by the patient and counting till 10 now interception of skeletal mass malrelation in class 2 class 2 may be because of the maxillary prognathism so we use a headgear for that to restrict the growth of maxilla if it is because of the mandibular retrognathism that is mandible is placed um, behind the maxilla so we give a myofunctional appliance to promote it growth in if the class 2 is persists because of uh, the combination of both the problems like maxillary prognathism and mandibular retrognathism as well then we give a headgear and a myofunctional appliance as well if class 3 case is because of the mandibular prognathism then we give a chin cup therapy which uh, pushes the chin backward if the problem is because of the maxillary retrograthism that is maxilla is retruded or placed far behind the mandible in relation to the mandible then we give a face mask therapy if the problem persists because of uh, the combination of both prognathism and retrognathism then we give a chin cup therapy and face cup therapy as well now when a succedinous tooth is not able to erupt there may be uh, there may be possibility that the soft tissue is over it is very dense or the bone is very overlying that tooth is very thick so we surgically expose the crown we remove the so we give a excision remove the soft tissue and bone overlying it so these were the procedures carried out in interceptive orthodontics i hope that helps thank you